This song, like all our songs, are dedicated to children. I'll try it one more time. One more time. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We're going to have a great time tonight. Can everyone hear me in the back? If you said no, you can hear me, so that's not going to work. Okay, great. Well, tonight we're going to cover the information that's the latest topic of my newest book called The Formula for Health. But before I do that, I want to get to know everyone in the room and I want everyone to know me, who I am, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. How many people here have heard me speak before? Great, not too many of you, so my jokes will be nice and fresh. <laughs> Wonderful, we're going to have a fun time. Now, before I get started, I can start off by saying I am from New York, if you couldn't guess it already. <laughs> Is there anyone here from New York? Great, we have a translator in the room. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to be talking tonight about a lot of good information and that's going to be very helpful. I encourage everyone to take notes. I will have an email list going around if you'd like to put your uh, email on there for my newsletter. Pat, if you could pass that around, that'd be great. I don't need your name, I just need your email address. I won't share it with anyone. Now, before I get started, we only have a certain amount of time and I will take comments and questions at the end. But what I would like to do first is I want to find some, uh, out some things from everyone here so I know what the best information I have I can give you in the amount of time we have. So, how many people here are eating a raw food diet? And I don't mean just like tonight. Okay. How many people here are eating a diet that's not necessarily all raw, but has a lot of fruits and vegetables in it? Wonderful, wonderful. How many people here are eating a, ve a vegan diet? A vegan diet. No, no animals or any animal products. Okay, wonderful. How many people here are eating a lacto-vegetarian diet? Like a fake vegetarian. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's just a... How many people don't want to raise your hand? Raise your hand. All right. How many people here just came from McDonald's? I just did. I probably visit more McDonald's than anyone else in this room. I love McDonald's. Because when you travel as much as I travel and you need a bathroom, it's a great place to go. The reason why it's so great is it's always available and they never kick you out. The reason why it's always available is because everyone's eating that food is constipated, so they're not using the bathroom. So it's like brand new. And that works in every fast food store except Taco Bell for some reason. But what I see when I go to McDonald's is quite confusing. I see people online about to eat some of the worst food on the planet and they're happy. <laughs> people are happy, waiting for their happy meal and everyone's happy. And that doesn't confuse me because I did that myself for many years. But what really confuses me is when I go to a health food store. Many times I see people online about to eat some of the best food on the planet and they're miserable and they're confused. And I couldn't figure out why that was. I thought to myself, maybe they really need the bathroom, it is not available. <laughs> but then I realized the answer. Health is more than just diet alone. Health is more than just diet alone. I don't care how good your diet is. If you're not paying attention to the other aspects of health, you're not going to be as healthy as you can be. And you're certainly not going to be as happy as you can be. So we're going to talk about the, all the different aspects of health, not only diet, but we're going to focus on diet because that's where people seem uh, to be misled and messing up more than any other areas. So we're going to talk about all these areas tonight, and that's basically the topic of my new book. Now, I want to get into my background, but before I do, I can tell you, I want to clarify some things. The first thing is, I eat a 100% raw food diet, and I've been doing so uh, for over 15 years now. Now, I don't think you need to eat a 100% raw food diet to be healthy. So I don't want anyone in this room thinking if it's all or none. If you eat a majority, maybe 70, 80 percent of your diet, uh, high quality, and then another 10 or 20 or 30 percent uh, good high quality cooked foods, that's fine. The only reason I don't eat cooked foods is because I just don't have a desire to do so because I love cook, uh, raw food. If I did, I would enjoy some cooked food every now and then and I would be fine. So I want to make that clear. The other thing people always ask me is, how over all these years have I remained to stay so strict or obedient to eating? 100% raw food diet. And I'll give you several answers. The first one is discipline. I'm a very disciplined person. Now when I tell people how I eat, many times the reaction I get is, well, I'm not that disciplined, I can't do that. Let me tell you all something. We're all disciplined for what we love. 
or all discipline for what our passion is. My own brother tells me he's not disciplined enough to eat this way, but this man has a dog that he's walked every single day, three times a day for the last 10 years without missing one walk. That takes a lot of discipline. We all have discipline for what we love. The other thing we need if we want to be successful, other than the knowledge, the discipline, we need this other thing which really makes a difference. It comes from the title of a book I once read, one of the greatest books I ever read. It was called Enthusiasm Makes a Difference. If you truly want to do something and you want to be successful at it, you have to consistently be enthusiastic about it. Now, how many people in this room want to be healthy? <laughs> now, how many people in this room want to be healthy? All right, that's more like it. You have to consistently be enthusiastic about it if you want to make it happen. So we have to remember those things, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things tonight. And we're going to question you tonight, so don't forget those things. Now, I'm very enthusiastic, I'm very happy, and part of that is, when you're enthusiastic, you, you can't help but to smile all the time. Smiling is such an important part of being healthy. I smile all the time. People think I'm either very happy or crazy. <laughs> I'm actually a little of both, because they say you are what you eat, and I eat nuts. <laughs> well, let me get into my background, and then we can get into the formula for health, which I believe will help uh, clear up confusion about health and nutrition uh, that a lot of people are very confused with because they don't really understand the principles to the formula for health and a lot of people are being misled to do things that truly aren't healthy thinking they're doing something healthy. They're being deceived. Because of deception, the doctors are making money, the hospitals are crowded, and, and we're not doing too well. But it's time that changed and it's going to start tonight, right? Right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. It's going to start tonight, right? <laughs> I am serious when I say you have to consistently be enthusiastic about this if you want it to work. I met many people who were able to eat a healthy diet for a month, even for a year, but then when I would come back to town, they wouldn't be doing it anymore. When I ask people how many people are eating a certain diet, me, no, I am. Enthusiasm, it makes such a difference. So. How I got into this was when I was growing up, I had no intentions of being a speaker and a writer. I don't even say I'm a writer, I'm actually a typo because I do it on a computer, I don't write it. Uh, so I, I had no intentions of doing that. What I had intentions of doing was just, I lived in New York and I was always into fitness. At 16 years old, I started working on Wall Street in the financial district uh, and I started working with stocks and bonds. I had a special program in high school where they let me go and do that. So my passion was just uh, making money. At that time, I didn't know chlorophyll was the greatest green. I thought it was money. So I was just uh, trying to make money, figure out ways to make money. And at the same time, I was getting myself sick doing it. I met many people who've been sick over the years. I've never met someone who eats worse than I used to eat. On the average day, I used to eat over 8,000 calories a day and over 300 grams of animal protein and no produce because I hated the taste of fruits and vegetables. This is what my average day was like. I would get up about 4.30 in the morning. I would go on a train to go to the gym to work out. I was a very fit person. I still am. But I would work out three days a week. I would box, and three days a week I would work out with the weights. I had a 9 to 5 job on Wall Street, so I would get on the train, get there, get to the gym, 6.30 or so, go to the city to exercise, and I would be in the gym uh, and be in work uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock. I would come out of work, go under, under the ground in the tunnel, in the subway. Most people don't know what a subway is, if you, unless you're from New York. They think it's just some shop to go get something to eat. <laughs> I would be underground on the train, which we call a subway in New York, and then I would get out to college at nighttime. I would go to college at nighttime, and then I would come home, and I would do my two favorite things. I would eat late at night and watch TV. Now, I was able to do that when I was younger, because when you're young, you could eat just about anything and feel okay. But what you eat when you're younger will catch up to you when you're older. And what you eat right now will catch up to you years from now. Another reason I was able to get rid of, uh, away with that, sleeping a couple hours every night and doing that, is because I was living off stimulation. Now, I never liked coffee. I never drank one cup of coffee my whole life. But I was addicted to something called Jolt, which was like soda with like quadruple of caffeine. So I was able to get away and do this for a while. It got to a point... I have some before and after pictures in my book here where I had two black eyes. It wasn't from boxing. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was from living this type of lifestyle day in and day out. It was catching up to me. But I didn't care because I just wanted to be out there and doing my thing and so on. Until one night I was...